Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome in to the Week 1 XBL Weekly Roundup here on our official channel. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on this Monday evening. My name is Weaver for Prez, and as always, for Roundup, I am joined by one of the co-commissioners of the league. His name is Dwayne. How are you doing on the start of Week 2, Dwayne? Dude, Weaver, it has been an awesome Week 1. I can't be happier, happier to be here with you for another Roundup. We had a great time with our preseason roundup, our preseason rankings, all the info we were able to give you guys about a week and a half ago. And now we have some action in the books, some top plays, some great comebacks to go over across all three leagues. Uh, just some amazing stuff we saw this week. It's only going to get better from here, too. So it's really, really great to be back. Yeah, it really was a fun week one, week two. Should be just as good, if not better. But tonight uh, is a recap of week one. And uh, to begin, we're going to go over the power rankings for all three leagues after one week of play. And as always, that is going to start with the double A. So without further ado, let's get into the lists. Starting out here at number eight and number seven, we have Mist Inc. That is uh, M. Uh, Coombs, I believe. And then SWAT, which is Sonco87. Yep, just a couple of players here trying to really find their feet in the XBL. We saw Mist Inc. and M. Coombs come up with his first win in, I believe, his eighth game of the season this week. So ranked down number number eight, still 
uh, trying to find that offense and SWAT, Sonco87 as well, trying to find his first win in the XBL. Looking a little bit better from his scrim record in the offseason, so mm -hmm. look to see some success, a little bit more success, I think, down the line from both these guys as they uh, get their feet wet. And uh, as some people have noticed, yeah, definitely want to point out uh, the new and, and improved uh, slides we have here with live stats. These are 100% live. Uh, huge ups, of course, to Wishbone Rules, a fellow League Office member, for all the work he does at making things like this possible. We'll move on up the list into rank number six, five, and four, which is going to be Yellow Bunting. Uh, Snowbird, as well as uh, the NA, I'm sorry, not NA hikers, it's just hikers now, Diesel, which uh, is a, a big drop on the list from one to four. Yeah, Diesel having a rough go of it early on, dropping some big games. You can see his at batting average at 408. So, I mean, I, I think the score lines must have been a little bit closer, and there's been a few blowouts involved as well on either end for him. So, Diesel trying to get it together there and uh, solidify maybe a little bit higher ranking going forward. And then at five and six, uh, the Blurs and the Black Roses. Snowbird came out hot, winning a few games, but ha has had a rough go of it. And Yellow Bunting is still trying to find his feet as well, notching one win in his first week. Yeah, solid list here, but that's going to take us into the even more solid, perhaps, top three. There's a big shakeup here, especially in that two-hole. Look at Natron and the Porgs there, rising five spots, just dominating on offense so far. Really love to see it. And flanked on either end by the undefeated Cougar, and uh, the Razorbacks, Ben Mc19. Yeah, the, the rise of the Porgs was really unprecedented. You see, they're a 435 batting average, 492 OBP, 11 home runs, only struck out seven times through eight yeah. games. So, absolutely an offensive juggernaut in this double A. Was not something we were really expecting go going into this season, as you could see that the relative unknown nature of the Porgs had him come in at number seven to start. but. Big ups to him for coming up with a huge rise, but still has to contend with Cougar there at the top, who is 8-0. Yeah. yeah, and we'll talk more about Cougar later uh, when we get to a different segment, but those are your week two, or at the start of week two, double A power rankings, which will take us into the triple A power rankings. And starting here is uh, Joe BJ, the Chesapeake uh, Bay ball club there. As you can see, no movement for him. He's at the bottom. Uh, did notch a, win, uh, a couple wins though uh, in here in season uh, ten. I I, well, I want to say he. I think he only had a couple wins all of last season. Yeah, he only had two wins recorded in all of last season in season nine in the AAA. He did choose chose not to drop down, have another go at it in the AAA. Yeah. And in the first week here, he's matched his win total. So it's only up from here for Job. I think we'll see more success from the XBL veteran going forward. And speaking of going forward, we'll jump into 18, 17, and 16 here, which is rise and fall down there, moving down a couple spots. Also a demotion there for Goldfinger, a couple of AA graduates just uh, still looking for their footing. Uh, and then uh, a one-spot upgrade there for the Hudson Softies and Tam Danitz. Uh, a couple of one-win clubs, and then rise still looking for his first. Yeah, Rise still looking for his first. Really had a great showing in Double A last season, like you said, trying to find his footing here in season ten. The batting average, the OBP, not quite there yet. Needs to find some power, but not striking out too much. So maybe the hits will come. Uh, the Aeronauts found their first win this week. He's like you said, another Double A graduate. He's a good power hitter. Already nine home runs on the season through six games. So he's going to yeah. look to add to that. And T Tam Danitz had a pretty good middle of the table season last year. Definitely looking to improve on that again. So. Right now ranked at number 16, but I think he has a bit of a jump off to, uh, to come across as things go on. And moving up past those Hudson Softies, one of my favorite logos, we have Zlatanimal and the Rhinos there moving up three spots. A uh, bit of a demotion there uh, for uh, for BBLC, who has yet to play. He should be back soon. We, we've we been monitoring that, of course. And then uh, the two and four Foxes there uh, falling as well, Blue Panther. Uh, maybe not the best start for him, but uh, still a solid ranking. Yeah, weak scoring-wise for the Fox is definitely contributing to those losses early in the season and the fall on the rankings. You can see batting 301, uh, but only 1.9 runs scored per game. So got to find that conversion rate, 16.9% mm -hmm. conversion rate for the Foxes. So that offense is hurting him now, but Blue Panther, Blue, Blue, excuse me, Blue Panther, a veteran player, is definitely going to find his uh, find his way through this season. And yeah, the Knights, yet to be seen. BBLC in the offseason is a strong player. He was in the uh, New Guys Tourney Final, so still excited to see him catch up and get started. 
And Zlatan was able to pick up a couple of his uh, first XBL career wins this week. Yeah. Pretty okay offensively so far, you know, a couple of home runs, decent run score per nine, batting average with pitching stats, definitely about to maybe try and find a, a median, the batting average against a little high, but overall, nice week of success in the uh, AAA. And we'll move on up the list here into that mid-tier, the middle of the mid-tier, you could say, where we find Tezzy, who is upgraded one spot, a four-spot upgraded for Ricks, and a five-spot demotion for the Holograms, uh, who really struggled out of the gate, but did manage to climb back to 500. Yeah, Ox dropping, I think, his first three games before he notched his first win, and now hanging out at four and four after a few uh, good showings. You can see the offensive stats not quite there for the small ball club but I think he was gonna try and build on that. That's kind of how he uh, he works his game. He's not too worried about you know, the batting average. As long as he can get a few guys on and, and manufacture a few runs, the holograms are gonna make something happen. You see the hippies there coming up from number 15. Rick's had a good showing this off season and it's continuing so early in the AAA season with five wins already this week. And then Tezzy, a AA graduate at three and six, uh, started out pretty strong offensively, did a lot of practicing on higher egos uh, over the late off season. So, we're looking to see more success out of Tezzy, I think, as the season goes on. Right now, though, had a tough going in the first week, getting a few uh, sweeps on the tail end. Moving on into the rest of the top 10, we have the Wolfie Lions getting upgraded into the 9 spot. Eduardo gets a slight downgrade to the 8 spot. And Phil there, the Pokemon OGs, uh, tied for 6th with uh, a couple people. Yeah, Phil, though, the most games played eight and four, sitting at number one in the table, but number six in the rankings right now. Phil was a lot of people's picks to maybe be a dark horse for the World Series, so going to be exciting to see how that goes going forward for him as the season ages on. Eduardo had a great showing uh, last night in AAA's prime time, sitting there at four and two. Uh, just a one-spot demotion, I think, more to the rise of other players uh, rather than the detriment of the beginning of his season. And we'll be lying, coming in two, at two and two, kind of right in the middle of the pack right now. And, you know, at 500, I guess that sort of speaks for itself. Wolfie, yeah. I think, is going to be one of the players that we see a lot of improvement from on uh, going forward, though. Yeah, some promising individuals here. And we'll get into the top end here of the Triple A, where uh, the, the other tie there with Phil is McDonough, who, uh, like you said about Eduardo, had a great showing on, um, on Match of the Week. Has had a great offense thus far uh, in nine games. Uh, we also have M. Bennings there getting a huge upgrade, uh, as well as Wishbone uh, sticking in that top four. Yeah, this is a pretty solid four, five, and six if you ask me. All, all three of these players can really challenge the you know, top three seeds going forward as the season ages on. Like you said, McDonough looking really good offensively. We saw it in Match of the Week last night. That 414 OVP is going to speak for itself. Uh, and apparently, he's got a lot of uh, walks to his. Um, mm -hmm to his name too as well that people have mentioned in a few of the chats over the course of the day today. A good showing from the Dog Pound at five and one. We're gonna see more success, I think, from M. Bennings going forward, really, really jumping on the horse, getting some big wins, scoring a lot of runs early. And Wishbone, his power speaks for itself, amassing 16 home runs through six games already. I think the, you know, the big power hitting astronauts just gonna keep trending upward. And that takes us into the top three, which is the Mississippi Moons and Rainy Borg, which is uh, Judas Goat all the way up to number two. And into rank one, I, I think, for the first time in his career, Phillies Rock. Yeah, Phillies Rock, back-to-back -back most improved player, season eight and season nine in the AAA, here for season 10 for one more go around in the AAA. Gets that number one ranking here going into week two. He's had a good offensive showing. He showed it on opening day and then in his following game. So definitely a favorable um, voting from the league office to, to put him there at number one. Judas Goat starting off really, really hot. The offensive stats for him really speaking for themselves. His pitching stats, a little bit more middle of the table. He's definitely been known to want to improve on those, but I think the offense is going to be carrying him and the well-deserved rank number two. And we do see Rainey drop right now. The pitching Von Aysen favorite, um, I think he's going to try and find a way to balance things out and get some wins going forward. Just a, a little bit of bad luck for Rainey here in week one. And those are the AAA power rankings after one week of play, which takes us into the XBL, the 90 Ego Run League. And down here at the bottom, uh, Jay Boop's still looking for his first win. And you will notice uh, that there is 19 teams and not 20. And if you missed uh, the news in the general chat, 
Uh, we are sorry to say that Cardiac Card has bowed out. Uh, he's going to be taking time off, not only from the league, but from the league office uh, due to uh, personal reasons. And uh, Dwayne, I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say we're really, we're really grateful for all the service he's put into the league. Yeah, absolutely. A true veteran of this league, and we wouldn't be here without him. So thank you to Cardiac for all the work he was able to do uh, for us. And we hope to see him again sometime soon, for sure. And with that said, we will move on up the list here into 18 and 17 and 16, which is no name holding Pat there, two and four. Webb falls a couple of spots after uh, playing a tough schedule, really, but uh, still one and five there. And then Finite Provision uh, there at 16. Yeah, these three players definitely all can find a way to jump into the middle of the pack. They just need to play, I think, a few of their contemporaries down there in the middle to get those series going. Uh, they've all just had a rough go of it in week one, losing a few uh, really close games. No name though, swept me, looked really good in that offensive showing, showed nicely in uh, opening day last week as well. And I think he's going to do well going forward. Webb had a really great off season. And I think one in five is gonna be kind of deceiving for him right now. So keep yeah. your eye on those melon heads for sure. And Finite and I played a great series this morning to start off week two. And if mm -hmm. you ask me, he's as dangerous as anybody. Yeah, if, if there were any uh, stonks to buy low on in uh, favor of them going high, I'd say buy Melonheads or Miners. Uh, honestly, there's like we've been saying, the competition up and down the board has been great. For sure. Uh, and we'll see more of that as we get into the mid table here, up into rank 15, which, it, or actually it's a tie there for between 14 and 15. That's uh, Kek Ayula and the Tac Peas. Great pitching team there, and B. Hagen and his megafauna has had some hero moments. We'll talk more about those later. And Doso moving up four spots at three and three. Not we know how prolific he is on the mound. He's shown some good offense. Yeah, Doso's offense has really been a great, great point of this early season. If you watched any of his games, if you've seen any of his run totals, he looks like a different player at the plate. And to pair that up with his pitching, it's going to be very, very dangerous. I think Firebirds are a, a stonk to buy low on for sure right now. B. Hagen and uh, Keck tied there at 14. They both are trying to find their footing in this early season. B. Hagen, you see there with 6.92 runs allowed per nine. Uh, definitely something he's going to want to correct. But like you said, he's had some big, big moments to be able to snatch away those two wins that he's got. And the Tacties, um, the offense not quite there. I think more patience at the plate is going to come for him more. And getting used to that 90 ego is also going to come for him. So Keck will probably get a little bit closer to that original number nine ranking as things go on. Which will take us up above the Firebirds there into the rankings. We have Ted Danson uh, falling a couple spots there with his Dragoons. Uh, Hummus there at rank 11, solid player as always, uh, up to five and three with the games that just concluded very recently tonight. Uh, had a three and three week one. And then Corruption's getting a four spot promotion uh, uh, after a four and two week, he's looked pretty good. Yeah, I think the four spot promotion of Corruption shows how much favor he's gained among the league after everybody's been watching his games this week. Just if you're not a fan of the Prowlers, definitely tune into one of their games and, and see the work he's been doing because Corruption's coming up from the AAA after winning it last season is, is looking like, you know, like a champion should here in his first season in the XBL. And that's really why I think you see Ted drop a couple spots, Hummus get bumped down one spot a lot because of that rise of the prowlers ted has had a great offensive showing so far at 6.45 run score per nine but uh no hummus as well 6.13 run score per nine so all these teams in the middle scoring a ton and the, the pitching game has really been up the accuracy meta has been raised at, in the league as a whole mm -hmm. so it's been really interesting to see how close uh some of these games have been especially with the, the high scoring totals as a whole really that i, I feel like i've been noticing yeah, and I do. Uh, I forgot to mention this when we talked about Cardiac, unfortunately, uh, backing out of the season. With the 20 players, uh, it was going to be 14, make the playoffs, six miss. Uh, and now uh, that is still the case with the 19 that we have, granted, in the unfortunate and hopefully unlikely case that we were to lose another and make it 18, then we would go back to 12, make the playoffs. But for the time being, it is 14, make the playoffs. In the XBL, of course, in the AAA and the AA, every team makes the playoffs provided you finish your schedule. Uh, so with that, we'll go forward into the top 10, which is the Surfers, Jam Paladin, getting a nice little promotion there after flexing his pitching abilities. Uh, Flash, one of the three teams that, uh, due to extenuating circumstances, has not been able to start, but that should be soon. 
uh, st- stands pat there at eight. We all can't wait, you know, to see what, what he's going to bring when he returns. And Dwayne, uh, sitting at 500 after week one and after the t- uh, this morning's games, are, you are at rank seven. Yeah, pretty interesting here. Uh, uh, come up from the top ten. Like you said, Jam getting a big raise. His pitching ability really showing through. And he's looked good offensively as well. He was able to steal a win off of Luke Archer, who's... You know, definitely one of those top four candidates as the season goes on. So Jam looking good in the early goings. We're eager to see as as he gets through the rest of his schedule how uh, the season eight AAA champion uh, is going to find yeah. some success. And yet we have Flash hanging out there at number eight. Uh, we're really eager to see him get started up. We you can see like not the biggest expectation. You now he's he's won World Series in the past, but number eight right about where I think. He should be for now. He's going to come in and try and find some success, I think, hopefully towards the end of this weekend. And then you have me at number seven. I'll let uh, I'll let you that, take that one away, Weaver. Yeah, just a solid week. Uh, the, the, maybe maybe a bit of the split game curse from season nine still looming. Uh, you know, still obviously uh, a, an immense amount of time left to, to carve your way towards, towards glory. Uh, I like what I've seen from the South Jersey club, honestly. Uh, and with that, we will move on into the top six, which is myself uh, taking a bit of a demotion, well earned in my opinion. Uh, we have Luke Archer there and GTM tied two very similar players. Uh, look at the run scored per nine uh, within uh, less than 1% of each other. Yeah, these two very, very close and you can see they're tied in their league ranking right now or in the power ranking, excuse me. And I think that's definitely part of what pushes you down to that number six, especially paired with a, a bit of a weak offensive showing from you, if I may say so. But I think you're going to find your feet going forward. You know, those those crazies are going to work their magic in Shaka, and we'll see how uh, that pitching works out for you as well. You can see your runs scored per nine and your runs allowed per nine, both very close together. So you're going to find some median there. Uh, but Luke and, and GTM, these two are as close as can be, and I think it's going to be a really, really tight 4-5 race as, for the entire season. You can see it through week one, the, the dominance they're both showing on offense. And, and if you haven't played them yet, uh, get ready, because it's it's going to be a slugfest. Yeah, yeah, very exciting rookie there in GTM SNBA 13. And we'll move on into the top, the cream of the crop here on 90 ego mike another one of those players a uh, couple of players actually here that that have yet to play they will uh hopefully start soon i know at least ash is very close um and then of course light snack uh with the home run lead there at rank two uh you know honestly could have could have been voted number one uh in my mind it's close especially having seen nothing from astronaut on a new rule set uh but his track record just i think propels him here yeah, his track record is the only thing that's really carrying Ashnod to number one this week, I think. You give it one more week, and maybe not the strongest showing from Ashnod, and you might see a, a brand new face at that number one ranking. Because yeah. I think Ashnod might have snuck his way in there once or twice before uh, over Season 8 and Season 9, but the Birdies have never been at number one. Uh, I think he, he could find his way into that well-deserved position at some point throughout this season if uh, the Blues don't come out swinging this week. But uh, like you said, Mike, we're still waiting for him to start. We'll see him soon, hopefully. Should be exciting to see Cooch Potato Nation get back at it. And those are the power rankings for the XBL after one week of play. And we're going to get into a, a new segment now. And uh, Fleur Bell, fellow caster, uh, couldn't join us live here in the booth. Uh, but he has provided some storylines for us to talk about. Well, these are the storylines that Fleur Bell believes are the the most interesting after week one going into week two. So we'll kind of talk about these a little bit. And the first one is uh, leaders of the pack. And this this is kind of something we just touched on in the power rankings, which uh, has to do with uh, Ashnod, who we've seen in the World Series twice in both seasons he's, uh, he's played. Uh, unfortunately for him, losing both to Lazy. Uh, Mike, who was a semifinalist in the previous season. And of course, League Commissioner Flash, who has the most rings uh, out of anyone, a very, you know, he's been around a very long time. These three have not played, but when they do, and in, uh, again, like we've been saying, we're fingers crossed for soon. They're really going to shake up the standings. Yeah, I think so, Weaver. That's definitely a great thing that uh, Florville was able to point out that these three players, especially in the XBL, could provide a lot of shaking up as they get their games in because they're going to be coming thick and fast as soon as the players are able to play. Those games are going to be, you know, tried to hopefully put caught up quickly and it's going to cause big shakeups in those standings for sure 
Yeah, and then that that second point there, the 500 gang. This refers to uh, you and I, Dwayne, as well as Doso, uh, Ted. Uh, no, at the time this was written, No Hummus was 500. But just within the last half hour or so, he did pull ahead of 500. But after week one, uh, a, a good handful of players at 500, and it kind of just harkens back to what we've been preaching about parity in parity in the league. And uh, just how close things are, especially in that mid table to upper mid table. Yeah, and the nature of the league with its double headers, uh, you, you will find a lot of players at 500. And I think with the skill level that we have spread throughout the league, that's a big reason why there's so many of us crowded there right now. And as the season ages on, who, who knows how many might stick in there? It's just, it's so hard to avoid those splits sometimes because everybody in this league is so, so good. We have the best players in the world right here in, in yeah. one place. Rookies on the Rise is our third storyline uh, presented by Florabelle. And that that refers to GTM, who's four and two, Jam Paladin, who's five and one, and Corruptions, who's four and two. Uh, and they came, they each came into the season ranked sixth, thirteenth, and fourteenth in in that same order. Uh, and these guys are really proving themselves on ninety ego, and it's been great to see that they're a combined ten and four against veterans. Yeah, that's huge. Like uh, Mike had in one of his hot takes, he said four out of five rookies yeah. are gonna finish up there. What do you say in the top eight or top half? In the top, he said half. Yeah, in top the top half. half. So yeah, that's that's a big statement, but I think that that has a lot of truth to it. Could be one of those hot takes that was really, really close to the truth, and we're gonna have our eyes on it going forward. Uh, great showing from all of our guys coming up from AAA. Everybody who also uh, was just fresh to the league as a whole, and uh, we're eager to see how that goes going forward. And then Yellowfin yucking it up. And who else could that refer to but the Yucca Valley Yellowfin, which is Philly's Rocks team uh, dominant out of the gate, undefeated so far, uh, four and zero uh, against one of you know one of those sweeps against the, the pretty much the consensus best pitcher in the in the AAA, which is Rainey. Uh, and the storyline kind of just referring to the question, you know, will he be able to keep this up? Is is the perennial uh, most improved player seemingly every season? Is he due for another? Uh, he could very well be, but I think there's some challengers up at the top of the AAA, especially, and I, I would name out Wishbone right now and um, and uh, Judas Goat. And then even Rainey, who we, we saw him sweep on opening day. Those, those three players, I think, are going to be challenging for that AAA title as well. So Yellowfin's right now yucking it up for sure, but those are going to be really, really yeah. big series in the regular season. They could be telling for uh, what the outcomes might be come playoff time as well. And in a similar vein, uh, our double A storyline here, Cougar Town there, Cougar 94, uh, undefeated through eight games. But he's got not, I mean, we knew he was a great pitcher, but he's, he's hitting well as well. And the question is, uh, you know, the double A season's a bit shorter. Uh, he's got a chance to go undefeated, in my opinion. Yeah, he has a chance to go undefeated in the shorter double, double A season. That'll definitely get him in a good position. Uh, I think we have a double ELIM planned, double elimination tournament planned for them as uh, their season ages yeah. on uh, as we get closer to our playoffs as well. So that'll be exciting to see how, how things wrap up for him. Will somebody knock Cougar off that perch or even take a W off him? So far, yet to be seen. So those are our, our the storylines that we have eyes on uh, as written by fellow caster Florabel. So thank you to him for, for providing us with that content tonight. And we're going to move into the top plays of the week starting. Uh, we have five for you. And we'll start with number five, which comes from yourself, Dwayne, the South Jersey Pine Sox, uh, in a close game there with the Tack Peas. Just a, a nasty little double play there in the hole with the shortstop. Yeah, just quick reactions. I, I was praying she would get it done there, and she did. It ended up being a 2-1 game, so that one definitely could have uh, made the difference. Yeah, big double play there. The reaction, awesome, in the bottom left. And that takes us to the number four play of the week, which is from uh, the... Uh, the opponent that you pulled that double play on, pulling a double play of his own on Corruptions, uh, as hopefully the play, the clip plays out here. It's a bit of an unconventional double play. Hopefully we can see it. It's a tag plus a throw that's in time, in extra innings too, in a tied game. I believe Corruptions did end up winning though. Yeah, Corruptions I think pulls this one out in the end, but this one here by Keck to, to save the game, really, this, like I said in the last one, could have made all the difference as that would have been a walk-off hit from Corruptions right there. So nicely done by Keck to just be heads up, go right after the runner and just use that arm. Had to be close to a 99 throw to get it over there yeah. in time. 
Yeah, excellent play there. Shakes us to the number three play of the week. And it's a familiar sight. If you guys watched a lot of the roundups last year, it seems like we saw this guy every week. Cole Hudson, the center fielder of the uh, last season, it was the Vrooms. This season, the Hudson Softies, that's Tam Danitz, making a play in the gap with the bases loaded up one in the eighth. It doesn't get much more clutch. Yeah, I'm starting to think that you know, Tam might be the best fielder going right now in all three tiers because this guy just seems to get it done all the time <laughs> he he has the timing perfectly on these dives he must have built a center fielder perfectly he just, he just doesn't miss a ball out there it's always so so clutch yeah something something tells me we will see that same exact player a couple more times at least this season and before we get into plays one and two, uh, a segment we added about halfway through last season, the not top plays, the lowlights, if you will. We've got three of them for you. And the first one comes from B. Hagen, a tied game in the seventh. Runners on the corners, two outs, full count, an inning ending ground ball. Nope. Takes his eye off the ball. Corruption scores to take the lead. And I believe he, those two runners that are still out there, I'm pretty sure they also ended up coming in. Corruption's kind of ran away with it because of this play. Yeah, tough one there for B. Hagen. Just a little bit of an ole out there. It happens yeah. to the best of us, and, and when it happens in a game that counts, it always stings just a little bit. But hey, that's not top 10 for you. And the next not and top 10 comes from myself. Uh, a Keep bit of a humorous alive. moment. If you've strikes. been watching my stream, you know uh, my connection leaves a lot to be desired, and sometimes it doesn't come out in the best way swinging at strike three but getting called a ball and following it up with a blue pit oh uh, man you guys were, were laughing a little bit on the stream uh, I, i'm just glad it didn't result in too much yeah mike's just cracking up at this one had me had me laughing as well because yeah, yeah how often is that going to happen especially in prime time like you said nothing came out of it so we can laugh about it now but it's, it's definitely a, a true not top 10 moment <laughs> <laughs> Good take, as Chad uh, says, yeah, for sure. Yes, yeah, the the motto of my season, I'm sure, which is going to take us to the final not ta not not top play that we have, and this comes courtesy of Mr. Luke Archer versus Jam Paladin, Chance Lauderberry, famous relief pitcher turned right fielder, misses that ball late in the game, gives Jam the lead. Yeah, there's the the Chance Lauderberry Sag, as it was titled in the clips, yeah. and and just. Not quite the right angle there from Luke, as you can see. Allows Jam to get that runner across. Makes a big difference in that ball game. Bottom of the eighth, too. Oh, man. Oh, man. Bottom of the eighth. And speaking of late inning plays, so we're going back into the top, the, the you know, the actually good plays of the week. And they're both from B. Hagen. And how could they not? Look at this gun from Bubba Blue to get the tying run out at the plate with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. 99 throw. It, it doesn't get better. Yeah, those are all always my favorite clips that end literally with the, the team's name coming up saying yeah. Yeah, Mega Fauna win as he just makes the perfect throw, perfectly timed, nothing Luke could do. Just a brilliant throw from Bubba Blue and we'll, we'll watch the, the dart one more time here before we show number one play. A little, it looked like a fork ball on the corner there. Just a, a Just flawless gets him by a step Bubba Blue providing that throw and Bubba Blue providing clip number one of the week a walk-off grand slam and you might ask why is a walk-off grand slam the top play and I would tell you it's because you see in the top right there it's five to five that inning started five to nothing the megafauna scoring I'm sorry it's not a grand slam it's three runs my mistake but Still, the Megafauna scoring eight runs in the bottom of the ninth. Just unbelievable. Yeah, truly one of the all-time XBL comebacks. And there it is again. Megafauna win right at the end of the clip. Yep. <laughs> that is a truly top play moment from Bubba Blue. Just B. Hagen crushing that ball. And and you could hear it in his uh in his um stream. He's just like, go, go. It's just it's what a moment. You you gotta feel for him there, you gotta be happy for him to pull off a win like that. Yeah. Maybe the most excited I've ever heard B. Hagen. It was a great moment uh, for everyone except his opponent, I'm sure. But what, what a crazy ending to that game. It's worthy of our number one spot on the top plays of the week. And that does it for our week one roundup. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Dwayne, for joining me in here and producing. Thank you, Floribel, for providing those uh, storylines. And I would like uh, just to briefly encourage everyone, remember to record your, your clutch plays, your clutch runs scored homers anything 
or if you if you want to laugh at yourself a little bit, post your bloopers. Uh, we have the the different channels for those. We have the highlight reel and the not highlight reel. So keep those coming. It really helps us to get content out for these things every week. And without uh, further ado, Dwayne, sign us out. Thank you, Weaver. It was great to be with you for another roundup this week. Hope everybody enjoyed the content, enjoyed the rankings, the plays, and and Floribel's storylines. We'll see you again next week for sure. So keep getting those games in. Keep providing you know those highlights and everything. Get get your screenshots and just get excited, man, because season X is really starting to ramp up. This is the end of week one. The season's starting to take its shape, and uh, things are only going to get better from here. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have a safe and pleasant evening. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.